Hi, in my previous video reviewing this 1 GHz Siglent SDS 5000 series oscilloscope, I made a little bit of an oopsie in the noise measurement compared to the Rode and Schwartz one over here, which I uh, was just uh, comparing the input uh, channel noise of the two, and only a couple of people actually spotted uh, the mistake. So let's see if you can actually spot it. Now, of course, to measure uh, noise on a waveform, there's well two ways you can specify it. You can specify the peak-to-peak -peak noise or the RMS noise, and usually, uh, like most people, will probably use the RMS noise you could you know it depends how you want to do it but peak to peak you can see like all these little uh, peaks in there and if we stop that you could actually uh, potentially see like little uh, tiny spikes in there that can contribute to the peak to peak uh, noise and that really is not hugely relevant in a lot of cases that's why uh, often the RMS noise will be is a better measure when you're comparing uh, like two different oscilloscopes in this uh, particular case and of course the um, RMS value we've got the st statistics here I'll run that again the uh, mean value of our uh, RMS is about 94 93 microvolts so you would say that this signal scope has an input uh, noise of in on this particular range on the one millivolt range with uh, two meg of memory at one microsecond per division with the bandwidth which is actually 200 megahertz it's not one gigahertz because on the lower one millivolt uh, per division of 500 microvolts per division range you don't get the full bandwidth out of it it's a bit of a trap for young players you only get a more limited bandwidth on this siglent scope anyway so we're at 200 megahertz bandwidth all those settings about 94 microvolts, whereas the Roden Schwartz over here, if we go over and have a look, the same settings, I've got one millivolt uh, per division, I've got one microsecond per division, I've got uh, 2.5 gig samples, so roughly the same amount of memory, but our RMS noise is uh, mean is about 323 microvolts. So you might think this Roden Schwartz is much worse than the Siglent, well the Siglent's much better than Roden Schwartz, but that's not the case. I've made an oopsie here, and <laughs> This is what happens when Dave doesn't engage his brain when he's shooting videos, and it, it could easily happen. And I I knew this, but I just, I goofed it in the video. So let's look at it. So pause the video now and see if you can figure out why the Roden Schwartz RMS noise is much higher than the Siglin. It it's, it's an important and subtle point that makes a huge difference. All right, did you guess it? Did you get it? Did you get it? Well, <laughs> I'll tell you all about it. And look in here, you'll see that you can see C1, it means channel one, that is right in the center there, and that would be our ground point. And you can see that there's a slight little DC offset there. And that is a problem, because if you're measuring RMS with a DC offset, by definition, root mean squared, does not take out that DC offset. It's going to include that DC offset value. So that's why there's a small amount of DC offset. Look, it's a one millivolt per division. It's only a couple hundred microvolts, right? It's it's down, it's almost bugger all, but it makes gonna make a huge difference and it's gonna add on and contribute to that mean value. And you might think, aha, Dave, dummy, it's because you've got DC uh, coupling of your input. Well, let's go in. To AC coupling, oh, turn my channel off. It's going to, come on, give me my menu. There you go. AC coupling, the statistics uh, have reset themselves, but it's still there. It hasn't removed that DC offset because that DC offset is actually after the input AC coupling cap, which is when you select AC mode here, there's a, a relay in there, either a mechanical or electronic uh, relay that will switch in an AC coupling capacitor. So the DC offset is actually after that AC coupling cap. It's residual within the input amplifiers and it'll vary with temperature and time and everything else. So if we made, wait another hour or something, that DC offset might drift up. And you can see that the siglent over here just so happens to have, at this particular time, it could drift, I don't know, hardly any DC offset, maybe, oh, and maybe, oh, it's a width of a fag paper over ground there. So this one has a slight, probably a slight DC offset uh, value, but it's not really contributing 
to that noise, not nearly as much as a Roden Schwartz. So that's why, aha, we're getting that high mean value. But there's actually a measurement on these oscilloscopes that we should use instead of RMS. Let's have a look. All right, so our AC coupling didn't fix it, but we actually have a different type of measurement from RMS. It's still RMS, but it's not RMS. <laughs> I'll get into it. Let's press the measurement button and go up and have a look. And of course, we can, uh, we've got uh, volts peak to peak at the moment and RMS, and we can choose many different types. So let's get a third measurement here and we can choose the type here and we can go in and have a look. At the moment, we're using peak to peak and we're using RMS, but there's one called standard deviation. And you can, I love the Roden Schwartz here because it actually shows you the actual formula. And in this particular case, you can see that this standard deviation formula is almost identical to this R, the formula that we get for RMS here, root mean squared, which is the square root uh, one on n, the sum from uh, one to n, and the square of the values. Anyway, this is not going to be a maths lesson. Anyway, that standard deviation is very similar, okay, except it's one on n minus one. It's the same range, so you're summing the same values, except it's instead of xk here, it's xk minus the mean value of x, and it's got the square in there as well. So it's actually subtracting out effectively the DC value. So what this standard deviation measurement is, is uh, not to be confused with a graph of standard deviation, you know, the bell curve and all that uh, sort of stuff. It, it, let's not go into it. This formula here is actually what's called a sample standard deviation, uh, not to be confused with a population standard deviation. And I won't go into the differences because then we have to get into a whole maths lesson. And I really hate maths. It's Anyway, this standard deviation is also called AC RMS. So it's, it's exactly the same as the RMS, but instead of including DC values, it actually simply removes any, you can think of it as removing the DC offset or having an AC coupled RMS value, but instead of physically decoupling with an AC capacity in here, it does it in the formula. It does it in the software. It removes that DC value. So if we select our standard deviation, bingo, we're going to, oh, well, let's reset our stats, there we go, and bingo, we now have our mean value of about of the standard deviation, and the standard deviation is actually a square root of the variance, but once again, oh, you math nerds, go, go for broke down in the comments, I won't, I won't try and uh, explain it, but the mean value is now 96 microvolts, practically identical to the siglin, in fact, because this is a higher bandwidth scope, this is actually 350 megahertz, because you do actually, on the one millivolt per division range on the Roden Swartz, you get the full 350 megahertz bandwidth. There's no limitation like there is on the siglin. So this is actually a better result, because as a rule, for the higher bandwidth you have, the more inherent noise you're going to get. It's it's just a function. Once again, there's lots of advanced math behind that and, and theory, and we won't go into it, but a wider bandwidth. So technically, this is a lower noise scope for a given bandwidth than the Siglant. There you go. I simply um, forgot that there was this DC offset up there. I didn't notice it. Dull! And I, and I should have, because it's really obvious. And also, I should have known if I was engaging my brain that 330 microvolts. Well, look at the uh, look at the actual level. Just you know, a mark one. Use your mark one eyeball and compare the thickness of that line to the one over here on the siglent, and you can see that they're you know they're, they're practically identical, really. In fact, the siglent might look a bit thicker, but and, you know, like slightly, there's nothing in it. So I yeah, if I was thinking, I would have gone well. It's obviously 337 microvolts can't be correct value for the RMS. So, oh, oops, there's a DC offset in there. Oh, I should be using the standard deviation or AC RMS. So let that be a lesson to you. You should be using AC RMS when you're doing these types of noise measurements where you need to remove any residual DC offset. So let's go back to the siglent here and see if the siglent has uh, the AC RMS as it's often called. Sometimes it's not called standard deviation. It'll just be called AC RMS. So let's go into the type here 
And yes, it does standard deviation. There it is. It's um, also for R both the RMS value here and for the standard deviation value, they have also what's called cycle RMS and cycle standard deviation. That's if you want to measure it over the one cycle on your screen. But of course, we don't have a cycle here. We're not inputting a sinusoidal or other uh, repetitive waveform. We're measuring noise. So uh, the cycle standard deviation and cycle RMS just uh, won't work and it just won't give you anything so we can put standard deviation so if we get rid of that bingo we now have our standard deviation here and it's actually um smaller so there you go if we're doing now we're doing an a b a true a b comparison uh the mean is about 65 microvolts so the siglent is actually lower but as i said the Roden Schwartz is higher bandwidth so you could probably run the numbers there and kind of let's just call them pretty equivalent uh, in terms of noise floor. But if you really wanted to do it properly, well, let's go into our channel menu here and let's get, we can set the bandwidth on both of them to 20 meg. Okay, so now I've got 20 megahertz bandwidth and you can see that it's much lower noise. The mean is now 38 microvolts on the siglent and then the Rod and Schwartz, what do we got? 44 microvolts. There you go. So actually, the Roden Schwartz is a bit higher noise for the 20 for the fixed 20 megahertz bandwidth there. And <laughs> curiously, of course, you've got the standard deviation of the standard deviation there. That's confusing, and we won't go into the details anyway. But just remember, the standard deviation you'll find in the measurement menu like this. So you press measurement and bingo, and you can go into the type and the type of measurement that thing if it says standard deviation on your particular scope just remember it's ac rms that's the best way to remember it because it's functionally what it is so the best way to think of that is the standard deviation is basically the spread in the numbers of the ac rms value if that makes sense <laughs> maybe you know if you've got a better way to explain it leave it in the comments down below please Okay, so a better example of this is if we actually put in a real signal. In this case, I've got a one megahertz sine wave here. I'm on one volt peak to peak, and I'm actually feeding in from my generator up here. You can see on my generator there, two volts RMS, and we've got a two volt DC offset. So let's just reset the st statistics there. The statistics, the th I can talk. <laughs> Hardly. So you can see our ground point over here is actually shifted up where one volts per division, so one volt, two volts. You can see there's a two volt DC offset here. The waveform has been shifted up that DC by a two volts DC there. And if you have a look at the RMS value here, then uh, let's reset our statistics to make sure I've got it right. And look at the mean value, it's 2.81 volts RMS. So of course we know we're only feeding in two volts RMS from our signal generator, it's giving us an error. Well, in this particular case, it's not an error because we've chosen the RMS measurement, which by definition of RMS includes the DC component. But you can see if we choose our standard deviation measurement, which is, as I said, AC RMS, it removes that DC offset there without having to AC couple. Remember, we're still DC coupled on our input. So we're seeing our offset like that, but we're effectively AC coupling this signal in software. So it gives us almost precisely our two, pot, our two volts RMS there, 1.98 volts. Near enough, well within spec. By the way, you can often uh, remove these uh, residual DC offsets by actually uh, self-calibrating the oscilloscope. And I'm just running through the uh, self-alignment uh, process at the moment with the Roden Schwartz here. So, like, if you move your scope to, say, like a much uh, different uh, temperature environment or something like that, you know, you go from a 20-degree lab and then you go use it outside at zero degree. You know, if you really want uh, the best accuracy, you should probably do a uh, re-self-calibration. And bingo, sure enough, after the uh, calibration, the RMS value now is 84 microvolts. You can see that there's basically no DC offset anymore. So yeah, I just hadn't uh, self-calibrated this scope. Self-calibrate yours, it's worth it. And if we actually uh, compare this to our multimeter here and we're on regular AC mode, I've had to reduce the frequency down to one kilohertz for the bandwidth of the meter here, but uh, you can see that we're at precisely two volts RMS because the AC on your multimeter actually uh, 
physically does AC coupling. So it removes that DC offset and you only get that standard. Effectively, it's doing that standard deviation measurement. And if you want to include like a RMS measurement, that's not true RMS. That's actually what's called AC plus DC mode. So DC plus AC, if you do that, bingo, 2.8. So you can see it's identical, 2.8 there and the standard deviation. And let's go back. If we actually go to DC, it'll be uh, two volts like that because that is the DC offset. It's measuring the DC offset. So there you go. That's just a comparison with the multimeter. The multimeter can do the same thing, but don't confuse DC plus AC mode with true RMS because true RMS means it's just measuring the RMS value will be correct for any wave shape, be it a triangle wave or whatever, or some weird convoluted waveform, depending on the crest factor, but let's not go into that. Um, a true RMS means it's valid for, the RMS values are valid for any wave shape, any waveform shape, not just sinusoidal. But you want DC plus AC, if you want to include that DC offset. So which one is more relevant? Uh, the RMS that includes the DC value, DC plus AC, or your AC RMS value, uh, well, it depends on your particular application. There's no right or wrong. They're both valid. It just depends on what, what your application is, really. So there you go. That's a bit of a little trap for young players. And it's important to realise the difference between AC RMS and RMS. So have a play around with your scope. Let us know what your particular scope is. Because as I said, it may not be called standard deviation. It could be called AC RMS and usually and often they won't call uh, the like say DC RMS they'll just call it RMS because by definition of the formula it's going to include DC but standard deviation could be called AC RMS on your particular scope or let us know if your scope doesn't have it at all so anyway I hope you found that interesting and if you did please give it a big thumbs up and as always discuss in the comments down below or over on the EV blog forum catch you next time